Hey everybody, Jazzy here. Most of you probably know that I have been sponsored by Nodecraft hosting for the past few months and I wanted to give just a quick guide for anyone who's looking to create their own DST server on Nodecraft, how to set up the world gen and how to set up and configure all the mods. Before we get started, there are two pieces of software I would highly recommend you get. The first one is any FTP client. Now, Nodecraft does have a built-in file manager, which you can use to set up most of the config files, but for backing up and restoring config files, I highly recommend getting an FTP client just so that you have access directly to the files. The second piece of software I would highly recommend is Notepad++ because it's, just, it's like a beefed up version of Notepad that works really well with files that contain computer code. You can set the language, and in this case I'm going to set it to Lua because that is the language of Don't Starve Together files. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is pick a plan. Now, Don't Starve Together servers typically like to have around 2 gigabytes of RAM to run smoothly, so I would recommend the Kilo plan at the minimum for setting up your DST server. Another nice thing with upgrade plans is you get additional instances. Now these are basically different versions of any game that you can swap in and out at your leisure. So for example, I could have like five different uh, Don't Starve Together servers and just swap between them as I want. Or I could even have like a Terraria world. I could have a Seven Days to Die world. I could just swap all of them out however I want. So once you pick your plan and sign up with Nodecraft, you're gonna wanna go to your dashboard, which is up here, that little green button. And here you can see all of your recent save instances. Now, I currently have two saved instances. This is the current Jazzy Endless server, which I've archived, and I also have the previous Jazzy Endless server, which I've archived, but I'm waiting to delete it until everyone can get in their screenshots of their bases. But for today, we're going to start a brand new instance, so right up here, you click on New Instance in the left panel, and you're going to select the game, Don't Starve Together, scroll down, and hit Next. Uh, let's give it a name. I'm going to call it Jazzy Tutorial. And as long as you grant uh, location services on your browser, this data center location finder is usually pretty good at locating the closest node to you. Go ahead and click on Create. And we want to deploy this instance right away so that we can start messing with this. So hit Deploy. That should take a couple of minutes. While this is getting set up, I want to mention that if you are shopping around for game hosts, just make sure that they don't charge you double for having a cave world. Because technically the forest world and the cave world on a Don't Starve Together server are two separate servers, a lot of game hosts like to charge you double. So if the price for the host seems unusually low, I would check on that before committing to them. Nodecraft doesn't do that, you get the caves world with your forest world, and GTX also does not do that, so there are no hidden costs when you're setting up your server. Jazzy tutorial is deployed, let's go ahead and open it up. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is go to our cluster token, which we have not set yet. Every dedicated DST server needs a cluster token, and this basically does two things. The first is it confirms that whoever the owner of this server is, they own a copy of the game. But it also conveniently signals to the server that you are the owner, so when you log on with your client, you'll automatically get admin access. Generating a cluster token is pretty straightforward. So you open up your Don't Starve Together client, you hit the tilde button to bring up the console, and then you enter this command. The net colon generate cluster token and then open and close parentheses and hit enter. Now what that does is it creates a file called cluster token in your data folder and to access it you click on this little data icon right here. That will pull up your local saves folder and this file right here is what you're looking for, cluster token. Now you're going to open it up and you'll see this super long string of random text. You want to copy that text and paste it into your cluster token field here on Nodecraft. Once you click save over here then you're all set with the cluster token. Now let's go to game settings. And this is all the default info for the server. You're going to want to change that so that you can have a more specific name for the server. So I'm going to call this Jazzy's Tutorial World. I'll put a server password. Let's call it Teach. Right? Yep. Server description could be anything. And the max players. Now, to keep you can raise it up, but... I I would honestly recommend keeping it at no higher than 12. Uh, the game is very CPU intensive and 
If you've played on my endless server, you'll know that a lot of players on at the same time can really sap uh, server resources. So in order to ensure the best quality experience for all the players on your server, I'd recommend keeping this number low. I find that on most public servers, eight players is usually the set max. But you can set your game mode down here, your server intention right here, just like you would in your uh, Don't Starve Together client. And once all that is done, you click save. And now the basic server has been set up. If you click start right here, then you can fire up the server and see if we have it uh, in the client. And one nice thing about the Nodecraft interface, you can click on console and sort of follow along with the startup while it's going. Other game hosts do offer it, but it's not quite as streamlined as this interface. Like sometimes you have to open up a new window, which is not super nice to follow along with if you're trying to do this on a mobile device. But once you see that green bar, that means that the server started up correctly. And when you see registering server in ma or registering master server in the lobby, should come in a moment. There it is. Now we should be able to search for the game in our client. So let's go back over here, browse games, and I'm just going to search for... Oh, and make sure that you have previously visited set to any or no. And then just search for Jazzy, because that was the title we gave it. And there's the world. Basic, vanilla, no, uh, no world gen options, no mods installed. But it looks like it's there and it's good to go. One thing you're going to want to do is to join the world. Uh, make sure the password is correct and make sure that you have admin privileges in the game. And from the lobby, I can already see that little star next to my name indicating that I am indeed an admin. This is because the server recognizes the cluster token because it contains my ID in the actual cluster token. So it just automatically gives me admin access, which is good. That's definitely what we want. All right, we're done here. We can disconnect and go back to our Nodecraft config. All right, let's do a little bit of custom world generation. So the first thing you want to do, anytime you modify config files, you want to stop the server. All right, now we're gonna create some configuration files for WorldGen, and I find that the easiest way to start with this is to host a local game just for the purpose of creating configuration files, which we can then borrow from and bring onto our server. So I'm just gonna delete this one, and I'm also gonna remember this is in the third slot. That'll be important to remember later, but I'm just gonna set this up and just do a few basic configuration options. Let's say, let's say only day. Let's say lots of wildfires and lots of meteor fields. And on the cave side, I'm going to set disease to none. And then let's just set grass to more and reads to more. Why the hell not? Let's generate this world. And once we get to the lobby screen, that means all the files have been generated. You don't really need to enter the game. So just hit disconnect and go back to the main page. Back on your Nodecraft dashboard, you want to go to file manager and you want to navigate inside the clay and then do not starve together my daddy server and now for the these are these are the save folders for both the master and the caves world and you're going to want a world gen override file in each of these folders so let's start with the master shard so we go to master and we're going to create a file we're going to call this file world gen override dot lua all right now, unfortunately, you are going to need to build this file from scratch. I'm going to provide a link to just a template file with this basic information in it. But here, in this essence, every override file needs to have override enabled set to true. It's got to have the preset of survival together for the forced preset. And all of your overrides are going to go within uh, these brackets. So now, in order to get the definite values for each of these overrides, you're going to go back into your client, click on data, we're gonna to navigate to the third cluster because that's where we created our config save file. And we go to master and you see this file level data override. We're going to edit that with notepad plus plus. Now you're gonna get all of the override options in here, but these are not necessary. Any override that has the value default, you really don't need to add that to your configuration file. And I wouldn't recommend it because it just makes the file long and messy and unnecessarily difficult to navigate through. So you just want to copy lines like disease delay set to none. You want to copy that and bring it into your override file just like that. And you want to do that for all the overrides. Now, if you forgot which overrides you changed, you can always go to host game in your client, open up your config world and you can browse through the settings and the 
Overrides that you changed will be highlighted, so you can see I did only day, wildfires, and disease, and meteor field. So I'm going to find those values in here. I already found disease. Uh, there's the one for meteors. I'm just going to copy that one over. Here's wildfires right here. I'm going to copy that one in. Oh, and day. Right, we set that to only day. So we'll grab that and we'll bring that one over. And this is our finished world gen override file for the forest world. So go ahead and hit save. Now we gotta do the same for our caves folder. So if you go back up one folder and then navigate over to caves, uh, this one already creates a world gen override file because you need, there's a required preset DSD caves that basically tells the server that, okay, this shard is the cave system. But we're going to do the same thing that we did with the forest overrides. We're just going to create this little group of overrides right here. We need to grab the info from our local config files in the caves folder. Right there, level data override. Open that with notepad. And same as before, we're just going to grab the values that we changed. So if we look back on our cave world gen in our config world, we can see we changed disease, grass, and reeds. So we're just going to find those values in here. All right, here's disease delay, here's grass, and what else do we change? Oh yeah, reeds. Cool. So now we just copy these three lines into our cave config file. All right, so that's our completed world gen override file for the caves. We go ahead and hit save. And at this point, we should be able to fire up the server. Now, in order to regen the server, there are a couple ways of doing this, but the, the method I like the most is just to delete the save folders in both the caves folder and the master folder. This basically just lets the server know that there is no world information, so you gotta automatically generate it, which it will then look at the world gen override options while generating. So we just delete both of these folders. So now our world is deleted. We can fire the server back up and it will generate a new world for us. All right, let's see what we got. Let's go to browse games in our client. Let's search for Jazzy. There's the world. Let's check, And then we wanna click on this to view world and make sure that the overrides went into place. Looks like, yep, day type only day, lots of wildfires, disease set to none. Looks good. And the caves generated successfully with the proper overrides. Excellent. So at this point, your world gen options have been customized and you can start playing with the, with your custom world. All right, now let's talk about setting up our mods. The first thing we wanna do is stop the server and just like with the world gen settings, we're gonna to wanna to delete the, ga the game save. Now, you don't always have to delete the save to enable certain mods, but if you're gonna install any mods that mess with world generation, like set piece config, you will want to delete the save so that the world will regenerate and look at those mod settings. So I'm just gonna delete the save folder in both the master shard and the cave shard. So caves, save, delete, yes. Okay, in order to install mods, we need to get the Steam ID for each mod. The easiest way to do that is to just search for the Steam Workshop DST. That'll take you, the first link will take you straight to the Don't Starve Together Workshop. Now here you can search for whatever mods you want to install. I know that I want Set Piece Config revisited, so I'll search for Set Piece Config and I will open it here. Now I'm going to open it up in a new tab because you're going to want to reference the ID number in each of these mods. And the ID number is located right here. You see ID equals and then the, the number before the ampersand, everything before the ampersand and after the equal sign. That's the ID number that you want. And you're gonna be pasted into some of the config files. So let's just do that for all of the mods we want to install. I, want, I also want to have wormhole marks. Uh, there we go. I'm gonna open that in a new tab. And I want epic health bar open that in a new tab awesome so now we have all three mods that we are going to install all right back in your file manager in nodecraft navigate all the way to your root folder which you just keep clicking up till you get here you're gonna look for the folder called mods and open that up now there's two files in here that we need to modify the first is dedicated server mod setup and the second one is mod settings so let's click on dedicated server mod setup and hit edit and you get a bit of commented out instructions here 
But basically, for every mod you want to set up, you need to run a server mod setup like this. And inside the quotation marks, you need to put the Steam ID of each mod. I'm just going to copy paste a few of these because we're going to install three different mods. Now let's go over to set piece config. Let's grab the ID number, copy it, and we're going to paste it right in there. And we're going to do that with all three mods. So wormhole marks and epic health bar. Copied and pasted. That's it. Hit save. And this file is all set. Uh, one general good practice I like to do is to comment, leave a comment of the, the name of each mod. Set piece config, revisited. And as long as you put two hyphens, you can put any comment in. And this one was wormhole marks. And this one was epic health bar. Awesome. All right, now let's take a look at the mod settings file. Basically, this file will force clients to have the mod installed in order to join your server. Which is good if you're running an anti-griefing mod like Camp Security, you want every client to have the mod installed so that they are limited to access. So the format for this file is a little bit different. You want a force enable mod command for each of the mods and inside the quotations you just want to have workshop hyphen then the steam ID and you just do that for every mod. All right, here's what the end file should look like. Basically forcing clients to enable each of these three mods when they join. So go ahead and hit save. And your mod configuration files should be good to go. So let's just start up the server and it shall generate the world and we can check in our client to verify that the mods were properly installed. All right, I'm gonna search for Jazzy. Once again, Jazzy Tutorial World. You, I can already see the icon indicating that the server is modded. Let's just click on view mods and you see we've got Epic Health Bar, set piece config revisited and wormhole marks all successfully installed on the server. So at this point you have a world generated with custom world gen and certain mods enabled and installed. Now let's say you want to configure those mods. You have to create a few additional configuration options and we're going to generate those config options the same way that we generated our world gen override options. So the first thing we want to do is stop the server and we are going to go back to our file manager. Navigate to the save folders, which is in, I should show you. It's in dot clay, do not start together, my daddy server. And then master, we will delete this save and then navigate over to the caves folder and delete that save as well. It's important to make sure that the server is stopped every time you modify or delete files or folders just to make sure that the game doesn't become corrupted. Okay, so now we're going to make our config files for our mods. So same as before, we're going to make a local config world. We're going to call it config world. And then we're going to go to, well, we're going to set it to one so that nobody joins me on my tutorial. Uh, we're going to go to mods and we're going to enable all the mods that we enabled on the server. So that was epic health bar set piece config revisited and wormhole marks. And if you don't have any of these mods on your list, it just means you need to subscribe to them. So you just go to the Steam, back to the Steam Workshop and you hit that subscribe button. And then the next time you open up your DST client, the mod should populate on this list. All right, let's set up our config options for each mod. So if you click on one mod and you click on this little screw to configure mod, here's all of your options right here. Uh, th these options are usually good at default trigger distance. We'll set them, set them down to 15 just for just to be something other than default and hit apply. And we'll do the same for our other mods. Now set piece config, this will be a good way of verifying that the custom settings are indeed being read. So I'm gonna set pig guards to zero. Well, I set it to default. Uh, I'm gonna disable the lucky desert, but I'm going to have, I'm gonna see if I can get two read traps generating and two developer graveyards generating. Done with that, hit apply. And the last one is wormhole marks. Let's configure that. And that just has draw over fog of war, enabled or disabled, we'll keep it at default. All right, once that's all good to go, we can generate the world, which will automatically generate the server config files. And once we're in the lobby of the new generated world, we can pretty much disconnect and navigate to the config files in our local game folder. All right, back on the main screen, we can click on data to bring up our data folder. We're going to navigate to cluster three where we generated our local config file. 
and we're going to go to master and we want this file right here called mod overrides.lua. We're going to open that up with notepad and you can see it automatically generated all the configuration options. Now this is actually much easier to do than the world gen options because you can just copy paste this entire thing and we're going to paste it into our mod overrides file on the server. So once you copy paste, let's go back to our node craft. Uh, let's go into master. We're going to create a new file and this is going to be called mod overrides.lua. And then just click on the body and control V to paste. And that's all of your mod configuration options right there. Go ahead and click save. And now we're going to do the exact same thing in the cave shard. Now for generally you want this file to match in both your master and your caves file. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create a file, call it mod overrides.lua. And we're going to paste the exact same information into this file. Hit save. And then that's it. Your mods have been configured. Uh, just verify that the save folders have been deleted in both the master and the caves folder. That looks good. Let's go ahead and start up the server and see if the mods have been configured. All right, there's our server in the list. And looks like we've got the world. Do we have the world gen options? Yep, that looks good. And the mods are enabled. Now we're going to want to get onto the world in order to confirm that the mods have been configured properly. All right, we are on our world. The first thing I'm gonna do is use too many items plus to show the full map and that's gonna take a moment. And while this is loading up, I should mention that if you get stumped at any of this stuff, like if some syntax on your config files doesn't seem correct, you can always totally contact tech support. Nodecraft really prides themselves on their customer service, which in my experience on any game host is probably the most important consideration, even more so than the actual server performance. Okay, that took friggin' forever. Thank you, new oceans. All right, so I'm looking for two reed traps. Not look like I got even one, but I uh, that that is that does happen sometimes with love at the connected lunar islands. So the world gen was kind of wonky on this one. Uh, we got one developer graveyard. Did we get another one? Does not look like we did. All right, well this is clearly a weird world. So let's let's try regenerating again and see if uh, see if we do any better. Yeah, with mods that mess with world gen, you often get these kind of wonky worlds generated. Like In that case, the desert like intersected the, the location of the lunar island. But actually, with set piece config revisited, we can confirm that the configuration options are good because by default, you get this lucky desert biome, which generates like a tall bird fort and a developer graveyard inside the desert. And I did not see those set pieces in this desert, but we can confirm that on this world as well, as soon as it's done loading the map. Okay, it well, looks like set piece config did not do a great job this time at generating the developer graveyard, but we can confirm that the mod settings work because there is no lucky desert set piece. Usually find a Talbert Fort and a developer graveyard in the D Fly Desert, and there is not one of those. And we can confirm that the mod is active because there is indeed a reed trap set piece. So, yep, looks like the, the server is properly configured. I would just probably regenerate the server a few times to get. Uh, to get a more ideal world but yeah there you go that basically wraps up how to configure uh, mods for your dedicated server now the last thing you're going to want to do is to back up all of the config files that you just wrote uh, the main reason for this is sometimes when you update the server steam has a nasty habit of overriding some of these config files and it could be a pain in the butt to have to rewrite them every time a new update comes out so the way to do this is you get a ftp client like filezilla you go to your overview and you scroll down you hit enable ftp and once you enable it that will show you the hosts and all of the login credentials for accessing your server via ftp and this is what my backup folder looks like on my computer. You see, I've got uh, I got a folder called Nodecraft config files, and I like to place all of the uh, settings files nested in folders so they have the proper pathway. That way I can just drag the entire folder onto my server and it will automatically copy all of the files into the correct location. So yeah, you definitely want to back up the two config files in your mods folder you want to back up your world gen override and your cluster id and your ban list sometimes the ban list gets overwritten too when you update which is a pain in the butt but yeah mod overrides and world gen override in both the master and the caves folder you're going to want to back both of those files up 
But yeah, that's it for how to set up your server on Nodecraft. One nice thing about the back end is if there's an update available, you'll get a big pop-up on your back on your dashboard saying so you gotta update your server. And then uh, it's just a one-click option to run Steam Validate, and it's really streamlined. This console is really nice. It's something that a lot of game hosts don't have. And the file manager just kind of integrated FTP access within the dashboard is really nice. So yeah, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to send them my way. And yeah, you can always click on this little icon down here to start a conversation with a Nodecraft tech. But yeah, I hope this helped you out. And if you do sign up for a server on Nodecraft, be sure to use the code Jazzy's Games, which will give you a 30% discount on your first month. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.